common watch. I think I'll be doing this a little bit more often. Um, I'll still be doing other stuff. I would like to get back to doing some deck profiles, but we're pretty busy with a couple of my other business ventures. But uh, yeah, they're just commons that you know are, are worth a little something, you know, around five bucks and up, either individually, like for singles or for play sets. And there's some ten dollar places, some ten dollar single cars, twenty dollar places, twenty dollar single cars. You, you get the idea. Um, the thing is, you can sell commons. And lately, um, specific commons have been selling on eBay. So um, that's what I do with Common Watch is on my Facebook group, um, on my Facebook page, just so, okay. um, Car Games TV One. The link should be in the description. Uh, I, I point it out because it's like I have, you know, uh, a considerable amount of commons, and I know other people have a considerable amount of commons. And some people just got tins like full of cards, and most of them will typically be commons that they don't even know are, you know, are worth some money because they're not, um, they're not thinking about commons. When they think about a certain card um, being worth some money, they, they, they think of the, the high rarity. You know, for example, Metamorphosis is worth some money as a play set, around 10 to $15 as a play set, while the super rare ones from the Champion Pack 1 are about $100 each, so that's about a $300 play set. Well, you don't have a $300 play set, um, but if you have a whole bunch of common uh, Metamorphosis, you have $15 play sets. You're not using them, so sell them. That's the whole point of the common watches, like because most people who do market watches, for example, are just focusing on the highest rarity, you know, cars that the cars that people who have a lot of money to spend, a lot of money to burn, you know, buy for large amounts. But there are people who don't spend um, that much, or if they do spend a good amount of money, they do tend to go for lower rarities because lower rarities tend to be a lot cheaper than high rarity stuff. Me personally, um, especially in the competitive scene, I would rather play a whole deck that's full of commons than a whole deck that's full of hollows and ultimates and secrets and ghosts and so forth and so forth. Those are some high rarity cards. You want to keep them in good condition. It makes no sense to you know, sleeve them up and then start playing, you know, ten rounds of Swiss or something. You know, with with you know high rarity cards. It's like. Hey, if you got money like that and you can burn money like that and just play high rarity cards and not give a damn that they get all bent out of shape and you know messed up, then that's on you. But I rather have I like shiny cards, of course, so I would like to have a deck this hollow. And I do have some, but those are the ones that I, you know, keep at home, play with my friends once in a while. Just because it's, you know, my deck and it's cool and of course, I want to bling out my deck like anyone else would. But competitively or just logically, like if you're going to do a lot of traveling, you're going to be around a lot of people, you're going to be outdoors a lot, like away from home. It makes sense to have a deck that's of commons. You, know, you want to have, instead of, you know, having your, your super rare dark holes or your whatever high rarity version of dark hole you can get your hands on, just Use the commons, you know what I mean? Keep your high rarity cards, your valuable cards at home and, and carry around the lower rarity car versions, you know? They still do the same thing. Dark hole is still dark hole, you know what I mean? Instead of playing your, your ultimate rare MSTs, play your common ones, you know? So it's always good to have low rarity versions of certain cards that, you know, you have high rarities of for that, for that, for that purpose, for you to be able to, you know, Protect your high rarity investments um, by keeping them at home and then just taking the common ones. It's the same thing as making like a copy of your birth certificate. Don't carry your actual birth certificate around you, but you know, make a copy of it, carry that, and leave your actual birth certificate somewhere safe, you know, like in a safe deposit box or something. But anyway, common watch. You should be seeing a whole bunch of um, screenshots from eBay which is the main place I, I, I do the, the watch from because that's where I mainly sell my cars anyway so the idea is to show hey look 
people are spending money on certain cards that are common on eBay. And sometimes they pay more on eBay than they, than they would if they went to TCG Player. So that's the other reason to you know pay attention to that. You can actually make more money off of a comment on e Ooh, sorry on eBay than if you did try to do on T Street Player. Because some people sometimes like to point out the idea of like, oh, well, that card is worth this much on T C D Player, blah blah blah. And like, yeah, but the the point is is that card actually sold. I confirmed it. I checked it. Double checked it. It actually did sell for like twenty bucks. So just because it, its value is different somewhere else does not mean it can't sell for a higher value somewhere else. Not everyone who's on eBay buying stuff goes to CCG Player to, com to, to see if they're getting a, a great deal on a, on a card or a, or a play set of a card. Most people just go on CCG Player and just go buy the, the, first, uh, the first listing, the first thing that pops up when they type up the name of a card they're looking for. Sometimes they don't do the lowest price or whatnot. And sometimes the lowest price can be the highest when compared to TCG Player or any other website where you can get cheaper deals. It's like just because you can get a cheaper deal somewhere else does not mean the card doesn't have a higher value. It, the value comes more from the person who pays for it. However much the person pays for the card, that's the value of the card. Not, you know, the value you think it should be or the value TCG Player says. It's whatever somebody pays for. If I sell a play set of Karibos for thirty dollars, hey, good for me. I found somebody who's willing to pay thirty dollars for for a play set of common Karibos, even though they could have probably got a play set for like a dollar on eBay. But you know, they were not on eBay. They were in person. They didn't have access to TCG Player or eBay to check the value, or they just didn't care because they had money to burn. And they were more than glad to give me that thirty dollars for Karibos. They could have, you know, for the place that, right, they could have, you know, questioned it. They could have challenged. They could have lowballed me. They could have offered me a lesser uh, value um, for the place that, right? But they didn't. They were more than glad to give me 34, so that's the value at that time, at least. So it's, it's something to keep in mind. It's like at certain times, certain people do tend to pay higher. So you can deliberately take a like a $10 playset of something that everybody else is trying to sell for $10 and literally put it for 20 on eBay and see what happens. Just leave it there. You know what I mean? Leave it there for a month. See what happens. You might sell it for 20 bucks. That, that, that does tend to happen from time to time. You know? So that's what you're doing. You know? It's, it, you're, not, you're, not, you're not wasting any money. You're not spending any money to do this. Right? You just take a picture, post it up, put the price, and see what happens. If someone buys it, good for you. Yay! You made some money with very little effort. But that's the thing with some people. It's like, oh, no, that, that place says not worth that much, blah, 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 blah. It's like, yeah, because you went and did some, some research. You looked up some prices somewhere else and this, that, and third. And that's why you're saying it. You know, you're not saying it because you... It, the the cards itself have a price. It's not like every Yu-Gi-Oh card has a price already printed on it, where you know somebody could be like, "Oh no, that that that's not a twenty dollar card." Look on the card, it says that it's a ten dollar card. Like no, <laughs> the price is whatever the person who's selling it puts on it. I could put a a, a common Kribo for like a million dollars if I want, and if somebody buys it, then that was a million dollar Kribo. You know what I mean? But uh. This should be enough, and that's the end of the video.